And we should be live now on Skills Not Pills. Happy New Year, everybody. Oh my goodness, 2019 has arrived. We are here in the new year and it's very exciting. We have another whole year of Skills Not Pills for you to enjoy. Uh, this year and we're starting we're kicking it off and it's only jan it's only january 4th is it really only Jan january 4th oh my goodness sakes it's only january 4th and here we are we got our first live and i'm uh really excited today to have you join us so the skills not pills movement if you're not aware of what it is is an oasis of hope and inspiration where you can learn self-mastery skills and become your own health ceo it is a community of like-minded people who know that healing and total transformation are possible because we have claimed our own cures and that's how we know because we did it and you can do it too so instantly access our latest webinar for free it's called destruction and reinvention which is the energy of 2019 we have a very beautiful artistic energy this coming year, and artistic uh, creations are really um, about destruction as much as creation, because in order to create something new, you've got to clear your plate to create you know, something new out of the raw materials of what you had. So you can claim that free interview when you sign up at skillsnotpillsmovement.com skillsnotpillsmovement.com and there will be that in the show notes as well. I'm your host Carrie Hummingbird. I'm a self-mastery expert. I teach people how to reinvent themselves, reinvent their lives uh, using a combination of you know self-mastery wisdom and energy medicine and practices that are ancient that you can bring into your current modern life and totally change things up. So today I invite you to tune into this broadcast and hear Dana Farrant's story of unlocking fibromyalgia with one simple tool. One simple tool applied many times a day allowed Dana to release the constant pain of fibromyalgia. Having grown up in a cult, yes I said cult, having grown up in a cult and survived multiple types of abuse as you can imagine, Dana Farrant shares her joy from be, uh, her journey from being stuck and in pain to discovering a very simple tool that unlocked her body and gave her the ability to use her empathic gifts, her feeling gifts, uh, without overwhelm. You can download a free chapter from her latest book, The Inner Dominatrix Guide, Becoming a Badass in Business, at her website, innerdominatrix.com, and that is also in the show notes. So no worries if you're like, what was that again? You can always look in the show notes to find it. So Dana, welcome. Oh, thank you, Carrie. It's so good to get to spend more time with you. Yes, because we just recorded an interview for Soul Nectar Show, which you guys, if you want to go on the woo-woo side and you want to explore some of this from the woo side, you know, I do everything woo, so there's woo here too, but there's more woo, <laughs> more woo at Soul Nectar Show, and we're, our interview is going to be coming out in the new year, so it's going to be coming out in a few weeks, so tune in to soulnectar.show. So tell us a little bit about your story, because I'm sure that people are very intrigued now that they've heard this preamble. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a different uh, story, and, and definitely not a path that most people have gone down. So I, I grew up in a cult. And um, it was Jehovah Witness religion, but it is actually listed on the index of cults. And, and what makes it that is that it's very structured, it's very insular, you're not allowed to associate outside of the religion. And so everything becomes within that structure. And so I was confined to only people within the religion. I was confined, you know, as far as school and growing up inside of that was was challenging if for somebody who is very empathic so i was always aware of what was going on in other people's bodies in their reality and um in cults there's there's always a lie that goes on and this is part of the thing this is what i, I want to just kind of point out is that there are lies right so the people will present with one thing and there's always this you know kind of miss this thing behind energetically that we're feeling but we're not allowed to put words to it 
And so that was part of what started the fibromyalgia in place in the first place. You know, now that I'm past it and I can look back was the fact that I was never allowed to acknowledge the lies. I was never allowed to say, this is what's going on. This is what I can perceive. It was like, no, no, that's, that's not what you're feeling. This is, you know, it's just, just what's on the surface. Stop questioning us. And so that constantly shoving down what I was feeling created a system in my body that came out as physical pain. And, you know, over the years, you know, I, I wasn't able to kind of get things moving and unlocking. And so I was dealing with chronic pain over time, right? Like it was just, it built up to this chronic pain situation. And, um, and it wasn't until I found this, this tool to unlock it that I even really realized what was going on and how much that the physical pain was a representation of what I was feeling from other people and what I was feeling in this disconnect of, you know, you're saying one thing, but you really mean another and that I couldn't address that lie. So it's kind of a, you know, just an, an overview of where I've come from and, and why this piece of the fibromyalgia and I want to talk about it because I think for so many people, they don't necessarily recognize that what's going on physically has a lot to do with not only what we're feeling emotionally, but also how we are dealing with those emotions and what we're picking up on from other people as well. All of that can really play a part in the picture of this. So that's kind of a, a longer preamble, but. <laughs> no, that's great. You know, I, I really, I like your, um, your realization that it was the lie. Yeah. It was the lie and the denial of the truth that was causing problems in your psychology, which, you know, and I, I consider, I'm not a trained medical expert in psychology, but being a human in a body and on this path of alternative healing, where I've got a lot of certifications and a lot of training, mm -hmm. um, I consider psychology to be far more than just, you know, the thoughts in your head. Like it's, it's your body. It's the information stored in your body. It's your emotional experience. It's your subconscious, like, you know, that iceberg that's like under the surface of the water. Like you only see this little tip in psychotherapy sessions, like yeah. this little tiny piece is what you get. And that's not even the whole story. Like that's like 10% and all the rest of this is under the surface that's your psychology to me. And we're only addressing like the little 10% with modern Western psychology. Absolutely. Yes. Cause there's, there is all of the other pieces and all the other layers of who we are. And of course you and I love to dive into the woo and the energy side of things, which is a, you know, further down the, the, the iceberg pyramid. Um, but you know, I wanted to kind of, we wanted to bring in some tools for people. And so I'm just going to like dive right in there and, and talk about tools. So one of the things for me is that I am highly, what most people call empathic. So I'm very aware of what is going on in other people's bodies. As I said, I can be in a room and I can tell you what is going on physically with each person. If I was to allow myself to tune in. And that's a fair bit of information coming in on a regular basis. So when I wasn't aware of how, you know, how much of a gift I had in this area, it was just this constant overwhelm and, you know, barrage of stuff coming at me. And, you know, I started out in massage therapy and was working with people's bodies. And I, of course, have this gift for feeling what's going on with them. But I also have a gift for taking it on <laughs> and sometimes it's a blessing and a curse. So when I started in massage, I would do one massage and then literally I'd have to nap for two hours because I was this sponge and I was just like absorbing it from everybody. So I learned um, this technique of, you know, doing the waterfall. You have this, imagine the waterfall coming in and cleansing your, your energy and letting everything drain away and then put the shield in the bubble and whatnot. And those things helped to a degree. But the thing is, is that I still had to go for regular sessions for myself to cleanse what I wasn't getting rid of. And it wasn't preventative. It was more after the fact. So, you know, a few years down the road, I came across this tool of allowing your energy field to expand out. And I'm talking like way out, like size of the universe and even more than that, like infinite space kind of expanded out. 
And I find that when I first suggest this to people, they're resistant to trying it because it feels unsafe. It feels like, you know, that's going to be too much, but it's actually the opposite of that. So I'll just, you know, kind of elaborate here just a tiny bit before we go a little more into the tool, because when we, when we're expanded out, it's more like being um, fluid and nimble. So I'll bring an analogy from the martial arts in that, you know, when there's an attacker coming at you, if you try to block the attacker, they're going to bowl you over because it doesn't matter how strong you are. You cannot block someone charging at you. And, and that's what's happening to us on a regular basis. There is stuff, you know, coming at us all the time, all day, all day. And if we try to block it with that shield and that bubble, some of it still gets in. And so it still impacts our body. But if we expand out and we become like spacious, like the wind, like really spacious, then it's like in the martial arts where instead of blocking, we just shift and move out of the way and allow that attacker to just drop and fall. So you're actually safer to be expanded out than to be contracted in. And I think that's the big thing for people is the, the willingness to try it out. You need to know that you're going to be safe. There's also the idea that you know, if we imagine other people's post-it notes, other people's stuff is post-it notes, right? So their emotions, their energy is post-it notes. When you do this shield and bubble thing, you're making yourself solid like a wall and you can stick all kinds of post-it notes on that wall, which is why we get stuck with people's emotions and their energy and, and just feel the after being around people. But when we are expanded out like the wind, nothing can stick to us. So we can be in a room after, you know, with some training, you can be in a room with people no matter what state they're in, no matter how negative their emotions are, and not take any of it on. Wow, I'm like in awe right now. Because a lot of, I mean, I'll just confess, like I teach people how to shield, like how to fill up from within, right? So that their inner space is super full. So what I noticed was that, um, it's so interesting what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry to blow your I'm contemplating it right now. Yeah, so just play with me for a little bit. and then try Yeah, to okay, let's go there. It's not to say that those techniques don't work. I love the fact that you're filling it because you're, you're taking up the space. Yeah, and taking, I, claiming the space is a big part. It's important because if you don't claim the space, stuff can come in and claim it for right. you. <laughs> right. And you may not so, like that. And there's a huge empowerment on that. And I think this is kind of like the next level. So once you've mastered that and you got a feel of it, very important, then the next piece is to say, okay, you know, I am, I have the ability to claim all of my space. I'm an empowered, you know, sovereign being. You could go really woo. Um, you know, I'm this empowered person. And then, okay, well, what if, what if we expand out? So we'll just play this with people and say, you know, just, I love playing with questions and making it really fun just to play with it. You could always contract back in and put the shield and the bubble back up. But <laughs> okay. Just for a few seconds. If we just play and we say, I wonder what it would feel like to be as big as the room. And this is energetically. What would it feel like if I was as big do it as right the room? now, everybody do it now. Be as big yeah. as the room. Yeah. It's instant. All you have to do is like, I wonder, and it'll go. And then we go bigger. I was like, what, I wonder what it would feel like to be as big as maybe the state or province or country that you're in, if you're in a small country. And then I wonder what it would feel like to be as big as the country or maybe continent, or let's even go as big as the world, right? Just really go whew, bigger, expand out. And then we're going to take some nice big leaps and we just, what would it feel like to be as big as the solar system? And again, energy is instant. It's super simple. Don't overthink it. Just allow yourself to like, I wonder what it would feel like. And then we're going to keep going. I wonder what it would feel like to be as big as the galaxy. Right? Nice deep breath. And then I wonder what it would feel like to be as big as the universe. And then we're going to do another giant leap out and go, what would it feel like? I wonder what it would feel like to be as big as infinite space. And from that, if you take a moment, I want everybody to just kind of feel in, like take a moment and feel like how much more space is there in your body when you allow your energy field to just go way out? Like to me, it just feels like I have like 
so much room, so much playground to play in. And that freedom, like everybody else's junk and their crap falls off. When you let yourself expand out that way, anything that's not yours just goes, there's nothing for it to cling to. Yeah, what I'm noticing is that it's kind of like, um, it puts things in perspective. Yes. Because if you're as big as all that is, yes. this little pissy stuff you're dealing with with somebody, it's like, pew, pew, you know, like, get off me, mosquito. You know, like, <laughs> hey, it's like oh, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Silly mosquito. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it just is like, yeah, oh, they're not that big. But if you're kind of like trying to build your bubble and like protect yourself and all of this, which is part of the journey. So if that's where you're at, it's totally valid. And I've, I have also done that path. Okay. So, and I teach it cause it is part of the journey. You do have to shield, you have to learn to fill up, you know, so yeah. that is part, but then you can expand it bigger. I love it. What you're saying. I do that automatically. I guess I didn't, but I like the <laughs> way you brought it back. Cause it's, um, I just do it. And I, I like that you, uh, that you, asked the questions to lead people to that expansion because I don't know that I've ever verbalized it like that. That's really awesome. That's a great tool, huh, people? <laughs> I would love to hear your comments in the in the live, like below. Yeah. Like what did you Absolutely. feel when we went on that little journey? Did you notice anything different? You know, what's it feel like to be as big as the galaxy? Yeah. It's very exciting. And while people are putting their comments in um, we can talk about, you know, the practical application of this because doing it once is great. It's like, oh, I feel good. But we also need to make this a habit because the idea and where the transformation comes in, especially for me. So getting rid of the fibromyalgia happened in conjunction with using this tool on such a regular basis that it became my natural state. So as long as I'm not absorbing other people's thoughts, emotions, judgments, body pains, aches, history, as long as I'm not absorbing that, then I have no need for a physical manifestation of fibromyalgia in my body. Let's talk about that for a second, because we're making light G. I totally understand what you just said, but some people yeah. might be like, what are you talking about? Physical manifestation? I know. There's like, fibromyalgia. <laughs> like I, I get that totally. And some of the people on this broadcast totally get that too. And Describe it, explain what you mean by that. Okay, so, so describe it, like describe the, the physical manifestation piece or the fire Like the whole concept that it could, that things manifest in the body from some other undealt with place. Okay. Um, so when we, when we take things in, so let's look at on a physical level, when we take in things that are not good for us, eventually something breaks down in our system and you know something happens so if we eat cheetos every day and we've got that orange dye and all the other chemicals that are going in there you know you can do it for a while like it's going to be good it's going to be good and then like you know something starts breaking down you're probably going to have some neurological symptoms at some point if you're eating cheetos every day right and it's the same kind of thing so energy has the same effect we have an energy system just like we have a nervous system just like we have a lymphatic system and just like we have like our blood flow system so there's you know tubes and vessels and when we have too much coming in that is you know too much for our system it can create blocks in the energy system of our bodies and the energy system is what is you know flowing the the emotions it's what's creating the flow of like how vibrant you feel as a person. You know, we talk about certain things, but a lot of people don't correlate them to the energy system, right? So just the fact that it's like, oh, I feel great. Like that makes me feel fabulous or, you know, that's our energy. And, and so we just have these energy pathways, just like we have physical pathways for nerves, blood vessels, lymph system. Um, so I know it's a bit, it's a bit woo, but actually there's getting to be a lot more scientific data um, showing the, the pathways of the energy system. It's so exciting. There's a lot more. Everybody else is catching up to the rest of us who have been woo for a long time. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. We're like, yeah, we knew this for a while. People have known this for thousands of years in other cultures outside yeah. of Western culture. <laughs> yeah. So when you have, um, if you have a blockage in the artery, 
we know that, you know, if you have a blockage in your leg, that that can eventually, you know, cause a disruption and end up being manifesting as a stroke, which is, which happens in the brain. So one thing in one spot can end up, you know, creating a problem in another spot. So same kind of thing when we are, you know, constantly taking in people's negative emotions or their thoughts or their judgments, and it is creating blockages in our energy system, then the flow of the flow of our energy or our life force, our chi, depending on what you want to call it, gets thrown out of whack. And then we have to compensate, right? So it's just like, if you have your shoulder bandaged up like this, then the rest of your body ends up compensating in order to move around. So that's how we end up with things, you know, manifesting in our body or showing up in our body. So we get things, we get physical symptoms when the energy system has been out of whack for long enough. Yeah, because the energy system is a, uh, is a uh, less dense. And as it, as uh, the energy system has less flow, and things stagnate, it becomes more dense. So I got a really good visual while you were talking. <laughs> if you guys have ever seen like uh, a lake that's nice and full and lush and the water's moving around freely inside the lake and maybe it's a closed system, you know, but it's, it's got a lot of water and it's, you know, fish in there and ha everyone's happy and it's algae and la la la. It's a nice ecosystem. And then there's no rain for a while that lake shrivels, you know, and it gets more dense. And pretty soon it's just really thick, icky, muddy water, thick, icky, muddy water, right? And it's more dense and it stinks and it's putrid and it's, you know, it's, it's got all kinds of processes happening in it that don't smell good or, or look good or, you know, it's just kind of not, it's just stuck. But now if, like by some chance the rain poured down you know through that that pond it would fill back up and everything would start flowing again and it wouldn't smell anymore mm -hmm. right and it wouldn't be stuck and matter of fact it might overflow yeah that's Crazy. what we're talking about that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that happens with your energy and your that's the relationship between your energy body and your physical body just like yeah. in nature that happens yeah yeah, it's, it's, it's so, it's like you say, you know, we're finally starting to really get some scientific data on how much our energy system, our emotions, our belief patterns affect our, our being, like our, affect our bodies on a physical level. It's quite incredible. So I was, I know that we ended up circling back around. So the, the idea with this tool is that you want to start getting to the point where this is automatic. This is your natural state to be expanded out. So that, you know, when other people have stuff going on around you, it's just going floating on past. It's not getting stuck in your system. It's not weighing you down. And what I suggest to people is that in the beginning, take your phone, take your cell phone, set up an alarm that goes off every half hour right? A nice gentle ringtone, not some big mm, mm, kind of thing going on. Something pleasant and inviting, Something like a chime. Pleasant. Yes. A little chime, birds chirping, waterfall. Something that will remind you to take a deep breath and expand it. Right? It's a nanosecond, just like, oh, right. Infinite. <sighs> Go. It's like you're breathing in more rain into your lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to use the analogy. <laughs> Absolutely. Stick with, the, <laughs> stick with the metaphor. So when you start doing this, when you start, you know, implementing it like every half hour, then what happens is that you start acclimatizing yourself to having that overflowing river. And that's what your state wants. Like that's the natural, you know, desire is to have that going. And so over time, and it depends on, you know, how much of this work you've done or how dedicated you are with it, but it may take nine months, 12 months, to really get this to become a constant state. And then what'll happen is that you'll, it'll suddenly flip and you'll only notice when you're contracted as opposed to needing to remind yourself to expand out. And that's where the magic happens. That's beautiful. And I like it too, because I like encouraging people to claim their bigness and to stop trying to be so small. Like, mm -hmm. stop trying to hide. 
Yes. It's all that hiding and pretending and lying. Get back to the initial message. Yeah. Lying to yourself, lying to others, pretending it's not so, hiding. That is what causes the dis-ease. It creates shadow that blocks the light that you are. And when you do that, you get sick in multiple ways. Yeah. Because we need the light. We need the light. Our light. And we need it. We need ourselves to be fully present. And I think we're meant to be, you know, on an energetic level, we're meant to expand out. Because like if you notice, it just feels better. Everything expands. It's easier to stand up taller, which is great for all the digestion. It's easier to breathe, which of course we need oxygen, right? And you know, all the systems start to flow better when we start moving the energy out, expanding how much space we take up and really being fully present. Wonderful. Well, that was a great tip. I love that simple tool. And you guys could uh, take that one and practice it and and come back here and and comment on what you received from that tool, wherever you found this broadcast. Leave a little comment for us so that we can know that you you tried it and you got an experience Mm -hmm. and we're curious about what that might be. And tune into Soul Nectar Show. You know, stay tuned. Uh, The interview with Dana is going to be coming out in February. Uh, probably early February. So stay tuned to Soul Nectar Show. You'll hear all about her story. It's a great interview because <laughs> we already recorded it. So it's awesome. <laughs> you guys will see it. It's coming out in February. And uh, and you can uh, download the first chapter of her new book, her latest book, which is the Inner Dominatrix Guide, uh, Being a Badass in Business, which is all about claiming your space and, and breathing in, you know, your power, right? It's that and more, and there's so there's stories from the dungeon and how that relates to business and life and getting the mindset of being a badass in business. Yeah, so if you guys are really curious about Dana's story and about her experience as a dominatrix and how she applies all those principles back into business to help her clients become badasses, then go to innerdominatrix.com and download a, a copy of that. Uh, first chapter from her book, and uh, and then there'll be uh, you'll be on her list then, and then you'll get information about how to work with her, and uh, and share this broadcast out to anybody who's like really caving in on themselves and not giving themselves space to breathe and be, because maybe this will inspire them to expand, and uh, yeah, and then go to skillsnotpillsmovement.com for more interviews and more awesomeness. We also have a YouTube channel you can check out or here on Facebook. And uh, you can also check us out uh, at the website, skillsnotpillsmovement.com. Thanks so much, Dana, for being on with us today. It was an awesome interview. Great tip. Always fun to get together with you, Carrie. I love it. Yeah, soul sisters. Okay. (laughs) You guys have a wonderful day, and we wish you well. We hope you have a wonderful start to your 2019, and we'll see you next time on Skills Not Pills Movement. We have another interview coming up on Tuesday January 8th. So join us live for that. Bye, everybody.